I'm going to be talking fast, uh, trying to get as much stuff in as I can. Y'all have me in teams. Feel free to reach out. I uh, would love to talk about any of this. Um, so this is my contact information. Y'all are bored to tears with who I am. Uh, the important thing is my email address there. If you have questions, reach out, hit me up on Twitter, whatever smoke signals. Uh, Y'all know how to get hold of me. So this is the quick agenda. I'm going to spend like a little bit talking about AI, not because I know a lot about AI, but I want to level set and just make sure we're all talking about the same things. Then I'm going to talk about a couple of the tools that I use. There are a bazillion tools out there. I currently use like two or three. That's the only one I'm going to talk about. The other ones are probably great. Uh, very smart, loved by one and all. They're just not the ones that have caught my eye. And then I'll uh, I'll show you a couple of things. And Paul, I remember on Tuesday, I told you I was going to give you a script sample. That will be in the the demos. So, so keep uh, keep on attention, keep your attention up. So what is AI, artificial intelligence? The field of AI is really big. There are a bunch of pick pieces of AI. We're only gonna talk about really three pieces of it. Uh, the natural language processing, the machine learning, and the neural nets. And I put the, the, the uh, uh, abbreviations in their initialisms just so we can see them. Um, so, Natural language processing is the ability for the AI to understand the messy human stuff that we put in. Uh, machine learning is AI's ability to take a corpus of things uh, with some humans showing it, you know, this is a picture of a dog, this is a picture of a dog, this isn't a picture of a dog. Give it a few of those sets and then it goes off and learns the rest on itself and then a human comes back later and adjusts it. And then neural networks is kind of how it pieces that together. Uh, I was listening to a podcast about uh, language a while back, and they were talking about the word network li literally means a work, like a work of art or whatever, that looks like a net. That is a network. Had never thought of it that way. But the neural networks are all the little pieces of things that the machine language knows and how it connects them. And that's how it's going to do some of the crazy stuff uh, that, that I'm going to show you here in a minute. The thing to keep in mind is for better or worse, AI learns like humans do. So it looks at things that other humans are doing and then tries to take a current situation and extrapolate from the things that it's seen uh, what the, the right thing is to do, depending on which humans it's learning from or sometimes it's just wrong. So that's the thing to keep in mind. Uh, that sometimes uh, AI is just not right, uh, but it does learn like humans. And it's funny because I've seen some criticism of AI, like especially Dolly, the the image thing. And it said, uh, hey, you know, all it does is it just, you know, steals other people's art and then changes a little bit and makes it its own. And I heard that and I'm like, that is every piece of art ever. That is every story that's ever been written, every painting that's ever been done. Every script I've ever written has been going out and looking at what other people have done, taking it and then changing it to be the thing that I need. So again, for better or for worse, that's what, uh, what AI is. And chat GPT, uh, the, the big daddy, all of them, essentially what it did is it read the internet in September of 2021, the whole thing. Um, and then with a combination of machine learning and all that kind of stuff understood the internet in, uh, uh, September of 2021. And that's what you get when you talk to it is what it what it knew back then with a couple of exceptions. So how can AI help me and help you write better code? Well, I really like the nomenclature that GitHub and Microsoft use um, in that they call it copilot. And that's really what it is. It is it's sitting next to you. You're still in charge. You're still the pilot. You still have to write the code and do whatever. But it's sitting next to you helping you out. And I think that's a really, uh, a really great way to, to look at it, what it does for you. And that's all of AI. Uh, the way I think of it is kind of like my my GPS and my car, like I put my destination in and I'm roughly follow it. But if my GPS tells me to run off a, a cliff or something, I usually take the wheel and, and I don't do that. AI is the same way. It's kind of your copilot. Um, I've found that I get the best value from AI on a topic that I already know a little bit. So I use AI with PowerShell every day of the week, sometimes multiple day times in the day on the weekends. Uh, and it works great. And I've done some amazing things. I couldn't use AI to learn Python, for instance, or machine, uh, you know, assembly language or anything like that. You need to have some understanding of, of the product, uh, the, the, the thing you're doing for a few different reasons. Number one, when you're talking to AI, um, you need to be able to create good prompts. You need to be able to give it good things. And so prompts are the thing that you type and then it replies to you. So you need to be able to use, uh, you know, the right terms and, and things like that uh, so that the AI has a chance of figuring out what, you, what you're going to do. The other thing is AI, like humans, they get stuff wrong. In the AI world, those are called hallucinations, which I think is just a hysterical word for it. Uh, but you need to know enough about the subject to know when you see a hallucination. Um, and the other thing is you need to 
you know, you need to do your own work. So there's recently a story here in the last couple of weeks of, of some lawyers in the United States that use ChatGP to write a summary for a case. And they just, you know, control A, control C, send it off. And it cited a whole bunch of stuff and made some great claims. The problem is uh, none of it was true. They didn't check anything. Uh, ChatGPT made the whole thing up. So uh, you got you to gotta understand what you're doing. Um, so what I found is that the best benefit comes from it being able to do thing, help you do things you could already do faster or iterate on them just a little bit, take them up uh, the next level. And if you learn one thing from this session, um, other than that I can talk really fast, it's that uh, you should never talk yourself out of asking an AI something. So people in the chat are talking about how it, you know they've tried stuff and it didn't work. There's no penalty for that. Like there's nobody judging you for that. Once, twice a week, I have some idea and I say, oh, I should ask ChatGPT about that. Nah, it's too convoluted. ChatGPT will never be able to make heads or tails of that. And then I talk myself into it. And once or twice a week, it does it. It figures it out. It just amazes me. And that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, the AI is really good. But number two, we've all heard of this rubber duck debugging where you have a rubber duck on your desk and you explain to it the problem. Just the thought of working through the question to ask the AI often jiggles through um, uh, the, the solution in your head. So that helps you out a lot. Um, so the, uh, the mention in the chat room, that chat GPT is really good at making up PowerShell commands. Uh, it is chat GPT four is a little better than three and 3.5, but yeah, you definitely need to, uh, to be careful with it. Okay. So which tools do I use? I use two tools. I use GitHub Copilot and chat GPT. Uh, GitHub Copilot is inside of your IDE. I use it in VS code and it's kind of like the next evolution of IntelliSense or, or suggestions or things like that. Basically you start typing, it starts churning away and it suggests things. And if you like the thing it suggests, you hit tab. If you don't, you just keep typing and you ignore it. Uh, but it's basically just watching over your shoulder, seeing what you're doing. Um, it, it, it's got a lot of power. It's, it has access to GitHub, so it's, it's learning from that. It's looking inside of the document that you're in to see what it can figure out. It's also looking at the other documents you have open in your tabs. So it helps if you open up your whole project and it can kind of see uh, the whole picture. There's a really great GitHub study in here. I would love to spend time talking about it, but I don't have a, the, the, op the opportunity to do it right now. Check that link out. The big thing is what that study proved, well showed, because you know GitHub did it, was that GitHub Copilot helps people do things they could already do about 50% faster and um, uh, more of them. So 78% were able to finish the thing with AI, uh, 70 were not. It costs about 10 bucks a month, which I know seems like, well, that's you know what I pay for YouTube or whatever. You will get your $10 a month back in the first week. If you're like me and a consultant and you bill by the hour, you'll get it in the first day. Uh, so, so don't be afraid to do that. So let's uh, take a quick look um okay so this is the thing there's an extension you want to install that extension over here uh and it's called github copilot you install that this is the little guy over here you'll see it working so if i do a new document it's not what i wanted if i do a new document okay oh it did work all right um, pick the language. PowerShell is not one of the like top languages that it uses, but it still understands it. It can still uh, do a bunch of stuff. So basically you can do things like, I can type, you know, connect to SharePoint online with PNP PowerShell. Hit return, you can see it down here churning. Now with this one, it's funny. So this is, the, you know, doing demos is scary. Doing demos with a non-deterministic thing like this is tough. Um, it's gonna give me the wrong thing. It's gonna give me the documentation, which is nice, uh, but last week it was giving me the connection string. Um, so that wasn't helpful. Get all the lists in a SharePoint site. Ooh. Okay, good. Uh, but I don't like that. I don't like that. I want something else. Uh, get me all the non-hidden lists in a SharePoint site. There we go. So there's things like that. So you can see it cranking out the code for you. Um, it does that. And as you're typing code, um, it will, uh, you know, do it in the code. It will do it from comments. The other great thing is this helps you, uh, you know, have better comments on your code. And it's just not going to do that one. Thanks a lot, ChatGPT. All right, so let's go back to the slide because we got... Uh, so ChatGPT is more of a chat thing. Uh, I use it in a complement with, with a GitHub Copilot. I write some code, then I throw it in ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT, I absolutely just put crazy stuff in there. 
And so let me demo that here quick. And, th and Paul, this is the code uh, that you will get. I'm going to end my slideshow here quick. So I can get to my window or ignore all that. Oh, there's all this one. Okay, so here's chat GPT. I'm picking four. I'm picking that. So I'm going to put this uh, prompt in here. Write a function called fix SharePoint that uh, on a site using PowerShell, uh, PMP PowerShell. Have it look for a list called Shane Stinks. That's Shane Young. He was my uh, sidekick for a while. And create it if it's not there. Okay, so this is what it's going to do for me. And I think that's uh, big enough. Copy code, you're going to like that button because you just copy it back in. So it creates a function. So this is while this is churning through. Uh, and Paul, this is your demo that you can have. Um, this is one of the things I do. I write PowerShell, then I pop it in here, and I'm like, turn this into a function called blah. Uh, add a parameter, blah. Write me three examples, blah. And it just does it. So it takes the code that I would already write, elevates it up a little bit. So everything I write now takes pipeline input, is a function, has examples, and it takes me about two minutes at the end. Um, it's There's just nothing to it. So now not only does it write the code, it uh, explains it to me. Uh, this will end up in the site. So there we go. That is that. So let me get over. <laughs> I can't wait. So Shane is Shane was going to come in and, and watch this today, but he's busy with uh, with the presentation on site. So I was I was going to spring that one on him. Uh, that's twenty bucks a month. Uh, best twenty bucks I've spent uh, in a long time. I I write that check every month smiling. So again, there's your stuff. Uh, one minute left. Hit me up. Uh, I'd love to chat about it. Vesa, back to you. Excellent, right on time.